Hey guys, here for another Modern Masters draft. And we got a pretty awesome pack here, actually. It's a little bit kind of misleading, because we have this Scatter the Seeds and this Selesnya Guild Mage. Um, so you kind of don't want to be picking Wolfbriar Elementals, because you know you'll get cut off in the second pack, because there's going to be somebody pretty close to my left who's going to want one of these two cards. But... It's not really too much of a concern to me. I'll get good cards in packs one and three, and I'm sure that something will slip through at some point. So, uh, and then there's also the weird random corner case scenario when Scatter the Seeds could table or something like that. But I think we're a few months past that possibility. Outside of Wolf, Wolfbriar Elemental, Scatter the Seeds, and Selesnya Guildmage, which I think are just the three best cards in the pack, um, there's also Narcolepsy, which isn't too bad. And then there's something like Bone Splinters, Shrewd Hatchling, which are okay, and I, I don't mind Repeal either. And then um, Narcolepsy is probably the, the best card out of these three. And then there's also Glinthawk Idol, Smoke Raider, cards that go in specific archetypes. But um, Wolfbriar Elemental is a really significantly powerful card, and doesn't even need to be in a dedicated token deck to be um, just one of the best cards that you can play and, and just be really happy about it. So here... We have um, we have a nice removal spell and a rest, and it's probably what I'll be taking. Hikari is just, I mean, a 5 mana 4 4 flyer in most decks, and that's pretty sweet. But uh, Demir Guildmage isn't, isn't on color, and it's, it's, it's a reasonably powerful card, but usually best if you're in blue black, and blue black just doesn't really benefit from any of the synergies that, uh, that are available in Modern Masters. And generally, the decks with synergies, if they're a good version of that deck, are going to beat the decks that are kind of just value decks that, that don't really have a specific plan. Um, outside of that, I mean, there's another Smoke Raider, which I, I find these, these don't go too early, so seeing seeing them past you is, is to be expected. Um, there is a Pillory of the Sleepless, which is a good card in the Black White Spirits deck, or just basically any deck that can cast it. Bone Splinters is a good card in the Sacrifice deck. Helium Squirt is a great card in the green blue deck and I mean there's a there's a couple of green blue cards but yeah I mean it's pretty simple arrest green white's a good combination I'm really happy to pick up a um, an amazing removal spell this early and it, it complements my first card pretty well too here's actually just another really easy pick so far I've had pretty much I mean the first three picks that I've had in this draft probably 90 percent of people would agree with I think um, raise the alarm being being the next pick it goes with my my second card and it also goes really well with my first card and then there's just nothing else in this pack that's too powerful that I would really consider taking it I mean there's there's this good card for the I mean blood ogre kind of fits in a bunch of decks but he's best in the in the bloodthirst deck vampire last raiders kind of filler for that deck but there's a dagger claw imp which is an okay card boros slip blade which is obviously good in the red white double strike deck and then there's kind of a bunch of nothing, a Skyreach Manta, which is always great in the five-color deck, but that that deck doesn't really um, want for Skyreach Mantas. There's usually enough of this effect going around. And then there's just an Evolving Wilds, which is a sweet card in the five-color deck as well. So pretty happy to be picking up a Raise the Alarm there. And then here is the first pack where we don't quite have something that we want to actively play in a green-white deck. So possibilities are that we can try and branch out and pick up something and try and speculate on something and maybe move out of green white if it continues to not be open there aren't really too many powerful cards in this pack vengeful rebirth is actually a great card though and probably what i'm going to be taking here just because if i do move into five color raise the alarm might not make the deck but arrest and wolfbriar elemental will be great cards in the deck and then this is just going to be a great finisher I also could just take Evolving Wilds and try and support a Splash. Green White often splashes black for stuff like Bone Splinters for removal. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to take Evolving Wilds. I think it's a little bit more likely to make the deck, especially if I can still pick up a Scatter or something like that um, at some point earlier or later in this pack. And here we see Fiery Fall, which would be a really good card in the five-color deck. And then there's Conclave, Phalanx, and Fortify, which are both reasonably powerful cards in the um in the in the green white deck so definitely kind of another pivot point where i could go either way and i do know that i've passed some good green white cards at least in the first pack i've managed to kind of kind of hold that off since then and not really let one go by but 
there could be a very reasonable chance that that the, this isn't open this archetype but i think that the there's a little bit higher upside in trying to go for this archetype i also think that it's pretty deep so a lot of the time you're going to be able to have a pretty good deck even if there's somebody else or a couple other people fighting you for some of your cards so um i'll, I'll be pretty happy with picking up a fortify there not incredibly happy but um nothing too horrible or anything like that and this pack has a really good card for affinity in Glintalk Idol. And that going 6 pick is kind of a huge signal that it's open. And, I mean, I could play a rest in that deck. There are some versions that want Raise the Alarm 2, and some versions that would want Raise the Alarm Fortify. Not many. I think it's going to be the pick. It, it's, it's more of a speculative pick that... Um, that affinity is going to be open, and I'm really not losing out on too much. I'm maybe taking a Hikari that would be okay in the deck, but not really that good, or a Flayer Husk, which, again, is very replaceable. I could just pick up pretty much any um, any cheap creature um, to replace it. And then here, we we find ourselves with a Gnarled pack, which is fine. Um, this, this would be kind of abandoning the affinity plan. I didn't see too much affinity pre prior to this, so it could be that this was just a pretty strong pack and this was kind of the, the leftover best card. Um, so I'm not really going to read into it too much. It's just an, an option available to me and that I could um, consider at least thinking about going forward. But I'm pretty happy with a Gnarled pack here. Not thrilled being my seventh pick, but um, you, can't get, you can't get stars in every pick, every pack. All right, so now we're back on the affinity plan. We see a Dark Steel Citadel, Copper Carapace, Frogmite. So I mean, there isn't really too much in the pack. There, I guess there's a Waxmane Baku and a Slaughtermaster. So this pack was probably pretty powerful. But yeah, it's a little bit dangerous to be going in this in this different direction. But I'm also not passing any cards that would go in the Green White Tokens deck. So um, I don't feel too bad about it. And here's my first pack back. And pretty obviously, none of the other two cards came back. There's a Narcolepsy, which I thought was one of the best cards in the pack, and a Repeal. So, I mean, that kind of gives me some idea that blue is open. I think I'm just going to take the Flare Husk, because it can actually go in either deck. So, um, yeah, we have, we, have our, our, um, we have our two possibilities, and I think I'm probably just going to move in on Affinity, to be honest. But um, we'll see if we can pick anything else up towards the back end of this pack and I mean these smoke braiders both tabled which is um, a little bit insane but there's nothing for the affinity deck um, there's nothing really for either deck here so this is a little bit awkward I'm definitely not in a good position right now I'm gonna take this helium squirter I don't know why I'm gonna take this shrivel in case I end up in the green white deck I'd rather have fewer shrivels out there um, and I can take a Kite Sail or a Mana Leak here. I think I'm just going to take a Kite Sail. Because it can reasonably go in any of the decks. So, Sundering Vitae or Frogmite. I'll just take a Frogmite. And, um, and kind of plan to just move in um, on Affinity. But So, if we're moving in on Affinity, then the Gnarled Pack leaves. This Wolfbriar and Lentil leaves. Green really didn't seem open. I saw like a seventh pick Gnarled pack, which is not really um, a sign of anything. And with this kind of start, I'm not happy, but I'm not completely bummed either if this was my first pack knowing that I was going to be in Affinity. Um, well, there's a Cryptic Command, which, I mean, most of my Affinity decks I like to be more white than blue, but. At the same time, I did see that blue was very open last pack. The problem is that there's a good choice, a good secondary option in Blinding Soul Eater instead of Cryptic Command. And Cryptic is going to be really hard to cast. I do have this Evolving Wilds already. This is a really tough choice, actually. I mean, Cryptic is obviously just such a powerful card in limited, constructed, whatever. Um... I think I'm going to take the Blinding Soul Eater, though. It's kind of what my deck would want more, and I haven't even seen that I'm for sure going to be in blue. It seems likely that I'll end up somewhere around blue, but I think Blinding Soul Eater is too good of, a, of an other option to actually take Cryptic, the triple blue card, right now. And, alright, here we kind of see an interesting option. If we really want to go back towards that token-y, 
um, fortify plan, then we can take Spectral Procession. But I think I'm actually just going to take Court Homunculus. It's a weaker card, but um, I need a critical mass of these if I want this deck to actually be good. Um, hopefully I'll table this Mirror Enforcer. If not, I'll, I'll get the Frog in my back. Pretty sure about that. But um, I know how to draft this deck, so I'm, I'm not too unhappy to be moving in on it. So apparently I cut green-white pretty well because Sign of the Wild is coming, and then the last pack we had something too. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, so here I have the option between Relic, Hoverguard, and Darksteel Axe, and again, we're not really in blue yet. We'll probably end up in blue, but I'm just going to take this Darksteel Axe for now and and try and be in... I don't know. I, I think that Darksteel Axe is going to be good regardless of, of where we end up, so I'm pretty happy with it. I do like Rusted Relic as a card, um, but not, not quite as much as, as Axe. Although, I do already have a Kite Sail, and they serve, they fill similar roles, so maybe I should have just taken a creature. But then again, I do have stuff like Raise the Alarm, which I want to be playing Darksteel Axe in. I don't know if Raise the Alarm is going to make the final cut, but we'll see. Alright, so there's Darksteel Citadel here. That's my first thought. Um, at the same time, I only have 10 playables right now, and it might be short at some point. So I could definitely go with something like Mirror Enforcer or Glass Dust Hulk. Um, but too many cards for my deck is 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 kind of an, in a good problem to have. I'm going to take Darksteel Citadel because I think that Affinity is is really open at this table. And I'll be able to pick up the other cards later. I mean, I could pick up Dark Steel Citadel later, but basically my thought process here is that I'm going to get to the 23 playables that I need. So um, I want to pick up as many lands as I can because then basically I just get to play more cards. And then also picking up these Dark Steel Citadels will enable me to play cards like Raise the Alarm and Fortify because I'll actually get to the um, the needed amount of artifacts in the deck to make stuff like Mirror Enforcer, or Frogmite, and um, Rusted Relic playable cards. So here the choices are Mortipod or Mirror Enforcer, and Mortipod is actually probably going to be a good card in the deck. It's, it's definitely a solid choice. It's a two-drop artifact, and it works well with Raise the Alarm. I, again, I'm not 100% sure if this deck is going to end up really heavy on these Raise the Alarm effects, but I think Mirror Enforcer is just going to be a solid card overall. I, I could take the Mortipod and hope to table the Enforcer, but I think that that's pretty unlikely at this point in the pack. Let's see, five, yeah, it would, it would have to be like second to last pick or third to last pick or something like that. So it's unlikely that the Mirror Enforcer tables, people are probably just going to hate draft it before then because there's nothing else in the pack for them. But I'm pretty happy with where I ended up so far. Taking that Glintock Idol, it might just be a bias of mine towards this deck, but I think that it was actually a pretty... Um, smart decision at that point. But we'll see. We'll see where we go from here. I still need a lot of good cards and there are going to be packs like this where I kind of just miss and I think it's less because somebody else took an artifact, um, took an affinity card and more because there just wasn't an affinity card from the pack. There is this thought cast which I'll, I'll probably play um, if I'm short on playables but not a very good card. I don't want a second kite sail Expedition map isn't a playable card. Otherworldly Journey could be a sideboard card against like the five Sunburst creature deck, but even so, not too powerful. And then we get another miss here, which is which is worrisome. So I think I'd rather have a first mana leak over a second thought cast. But um, this this two packs in a row could be the start of of kind of a signal that there is somebody in this range. In, within these three drafters, because this is me. So, um, sorry. Within, I don't know, whatever. Either way, there could be somebody else who's playing Affinity, which would be really, really bad for me. <laughs> um, so I could take another Flare Husk as an artifact. I could take Cumulox. It looks like I'm going to actually have some blue in my deck, and I, and I also already suspected that blue was open, so maybe I'll give this guy a try. I have not been impressed with him so far, but I mean, he does have four toughness. It's, it's pretty good in this format. You want to be... Um, above three toughness for most things because there's a bunch of common removal spells that kill three toughness creatures being Sunlance, Nameless Inversion, and then there's also Lightning Bolt. So lots of ways to deal three. 
there's some there are definitely ways to deal for as well but burst lightning comes to mind but um i don't know we'll see how he goes and if i'm heavy enough blue then it'll work out and a second flare husk might not be that good for me so while i was pretty happy towards the middle of this pack I've gotten a lot less happy, and hopefully I'll table something from that Darksteel Citadel pack. And wasn't I supposed to table a Frogmite too? Well, I guess, right, I haven't tabled anything yet. That was the eighth pick, so um, hopefully we'll see here through the rest of this pack. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see. Ether Case Knight, Flyer Husk, Cloud Elemental. So this is just great for me. Um, it means that there's probably nobody else in Affinity. Although, that pack had a Cryptic Command in it, so um, they could have just taken that. But here's a Mirror Enforcer tabling, and <laughs> I'm a lot more comfortable right now than I was 35, 40 seconds ago. Picked up a Mirror Enforcer and another Artifact creature early on in the curve. So, I mean, if you just look at my preliminary Artifact count even before the second pack is over, I've got two Dark Seal Citadels. And then three one drops, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten early artifacts. I want to get that up to like 15, 16. But I also missed half of the first pack because I wasn't taking artifact creatures yet. Or not half the first pack, but the first five picks or so. So, um, overall, not too upset with how this went. I think the middle of the pack was a little bit unfortunate for me. And it could just mean that there's, it could just mean that there's actually somebody in artifacts, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to take a Rusted Relic over a Hover Guard here. I already have a few Affinity cards, like four of them, that'll benefit from it, and I'd rather have a Rusted Relic, which I can just play as a big creature, um, towards the middle of the curve. So I'm really happy to pick that up. And both of those Affinity cards tabled again, so that's just more evidence that Affinity is probably open, and I'll get really paid off in the third pack, especially if somebody opens an Affinity Bomb, like, I mean, I guess Lodestone Mirror is really the best, but... Um, cranial plating maybe. Tabled the Glass Tusk Hulk too. So, things are going well. Things are looking up here. I hate how it does that. I wanted it to insert here. I, I like to pull my um, my spells out of the curve because they don't actually um, really function um, in terms of you play that card at that mana spot, but um, I don't know, whatever. So, we're probably not going to play this Fortify or this Raise the Alarm, but we'll see. So, for this deck to actually be good, I want three Court Homunculus to be opened and two Glintock Idols to be opened and to get all of them. And I would also really like to see a Cranial Plating, just because um, that card is absolutely insane. It makes this deck go from being an average deck into an amazing deck. But either way, I know that I'm going to get pretty much all the Affinity cards opened in the last pack, so um, I'm pretty happy about that. All right, I think an Edge Champion's great. It's kind of what I was hoping for, and I'll probably be able to table the Rusted Relic too. There's a Fairy neck Mechanist, so I'll table one of them, and I'm happy playing either. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty happy with this pickup. It's a cheap artifact, benefits from other artifacts, and gives me a, a pretty nice effect, especially combined with Dark Steel Axe or the Cranial Plating that I'm about to get past. Any minute now. <laughs> um, the problem with cranial plating is that other decks actually want it, even though it's just absolutely insane in this deck. There are plenty of other decks that are willing to play it. I've even seen a five-color deck that has a bunch of Skyreach Mantas and Wayfarers Bobbles that they just don't crack play it. Um, I've I've obviously seen the Red White Equipment deck play it because they're just in the market for any sort of um, any sort of equipment. This is just an impossible pick here for me. I have to choose between Dispatch, Arrest, and Glintock Idol, and sort of Mirror Smith, but I'm going to immediately discard Mirror Smith because it's a cheap card that isn't removal and isn't an artifact, So and it doesn't really pay me off too much for having artifacts. It pays me off a little bit. If I play those Fortifies, then it becomes a much better card, but regardless, there's still an Arrest, a Glintock Idol, and a Dispatch, so I think I have enough artifacts for Dispatch to be good and turned on, but I still think I need to take Glintock Idol just because the early part of my curve is not where it needs to be. It could be a huge mistake, but there's also a strong possibility that I table this. Um, I mean, I could table the Glintock Idol as well. In fact, I think I should probably take whichever one I think I'm more likely to table. The problem is, or whichever one I'm less likely to table. Wait, no, whichever one, yeah, whichever one I'm less likely to table, but I'm not 100% sure which one that is. So I'm going to take the Glintock Idol and hope the other one comes back. 
But if it doesn't, then um, then I made my choice, and, and I, I'm happy to have a card early in the curve. Could take a repeal here as some removal, and I mean, I'm very happy with that card. It could take a third fortify from my deck that doesn't um, have enough fortify targets. So I'm just going to take a Sickle Slicer as an early creature. It's not great, and it's not going to be great in my deck, but um, it's fine. All right, let's take a Frogmite. I don't love Frogmite, but I do like Frogmite more with Darksteel Citadels, and hopefully I'll get one more of those. I mean, obviously you want a lot, but four is a pretty good number. Does not look like I'm going to be casting this Cumulox. Though, to be honest, I actually only have one Quark Homunculus and two Glenhawk Idols, so I don't need to be playing that much white, so I could actually play a decent amount of blue. Not 100% sure if this deck actually wants to be playing Evolving Wilds, even though it is a two-color deck. It's not too heavy on the fixing, and um, generally you're pretty okay um, not without colored mana, because most of your spells are colorless anyway. So there's a Gust Skimmer in this pack that hopefully I'll table. I need to take the Court Homunculus, though. The card is just so important for this deck to be good. This... Oh, okay, it's not a complete... I thought it was a complete miss, but then I saw the Fairy Mechanist. Sphere of the Suns wouldn't be horrible in my deck, but not really what I'm looking for. But Fairy Mechanist is, because um, you have to remember that these Frog Mites are never going to be cast as 4-drops. Um, they're really 3s, 2s, or sometimes even less than that, so... Uh, my my curve isn't looking too bad, and these Mirror Enforcers are kind of like 5s. This guy, I don't really know where he, where he fits in the curve. Because even if you get him out early, it's kind of awkward because Darksteel Citadel doesn't really count for two. I don't know. He's probably like a five mana, five, four flyer or something like that in this deck. But I guess I'm not really sure how much this deck is really in the market for a five mana, five, four flyer. So it's probably not going to make the cut. I mean, I already have 25 cards here. I don't need to play a Sickle Slicer or a Kite Sail. Um, or a Cumulox, or a Mana Leak, or a Thought Cast. Like, none of those cards need to be in my deck. They're definitely on the chopping block, but we'll see what happens. Nothing in this pack that's um, that's really going to be too powerful for us. I could take the Is It Boiler Works, in case I find a red card that I want to splash, but it's pretty late in the pack. There's no real way that that's going to happen, that a red card's going to make it through, so I'll just I'll take the Water Servant. I don't know. I mean, it is a blue card that I could play, so... Why not? Take a repeal here. I, I think these cards are just blank. But there is a possibility that there's one other affinity guy. I'm not 100% sure. But it's kind of unfortunate. Either way, I didn't end up with any cranial plating, so there's no way that this deck is going to be more than like a, a 4, or sorry, like a, a 6 or a 7 um, out of 10 in terms of affinity decks. But either way. So. Let's bring out all these these cards over here. Um, definitely can be cut from the deck. I wouldn't mind a somber hover guard. I like that card a lot better than Cumulox. But even so, I don't have I don't have too much equipment, so the flying plan isn't incredible. Flying plan is usually a lot better when you have a uh, cranial plating. But yeah, so I saw all the cards that I'm gonna see. There are a couple that I wanted to table, but so we have four cards here that we want to get rid of. That'll bring us to 22. I probably want to play 17 lands in this deck. I mean, I, could, I might be able to get away with 16, but with stuff like Glintock Idol, Darksteel Axe, Blinding Soul Eater, there's usually enough to do with my mana that I'm, I'm okay with, um, with playing a couple extras. And, I mean, I'll probably end up with the Sickle Slicer in the deck. Or maybe the Kite Sail. Yeah, I'll probably play the Kite Sail over it because I have Rusted Relic Double Mirror Enforcer, and um, I'm hoping to table another Rusted Relic, I think. There's definitely one somewhere around there, and I think it was the only other reasonable affinity card in the pack, so there's a good chance that I get it back. If we're still under the assumption that I'm the only affinity drafter. I bet you my first two rounds I'm going to play against other people in affinity and just be shocked and confused. <laughs> but... My my diagnosis of this draft so far is that I found that Affinity was open, and so I tabled both the me uh, Mechanist and the Rusted Relic. I'd rather play a Rusted Relic in this deck, I think. I mean, we're basically all artifacts, so this is just a 2-2 flyer draw a card when it enters the battlefield. Um, not necessarily, though. Yeah, I'm going to take the Rusted Relic. 
Works better with the kite sail plan anyway. So I think we can safely cut these three. Well, no. That's not true. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. We'll see what else we pick up, but um, we need two more cards, but I think we'll get them. Yes! Dispatch. Narcolepsy was awesome in the pack. So I think I have to correctly diagnosed the seat that I should be in. This deck is supposed this seat is supposed to draft this deck. Um, the problem is there was not quite so much opened of this deck. And I only ended up with two Cordomunculuses and two Glintalk idols, which is just a little bit unfortunate. Um, I could take a Sphere of the Suns. I might even play it. It's I think right now it's, it's close between like Sickle Slicer, Repeal, Manalik, Cumulox. I think one of these five is gonna be the last playable. So right now I'm not playing this Evolving Wilds. If I do play the Cumulox, then I'll consider it, but um it's just not worth it. I mean almost none of my cards actually use colored mana, so I could play like swamps in my deck. I could play the Wolfbriar Elemental if I wanted to. <laughs> and not actually lose too much value. I'm looking for one more good playable. I also only got two Dark Steel Citadels, which kinda sucks. I took all the ones that I saw. I think. Maybe I passed one early on, I don't know. It's hard to remember every single card, and I think I have a pretty bad memory in general. Um, yeah, I'll take Stoic Rebuttal over the second Kite Sail, even though it's very unlikely that I play it. But if I have enough blue to cast um, Cumulox, then I might go for the Stoic Rebuttal. It looks like we're not going to get that last pick, Mirror Enforcer or something like that. Yeah, Telling Time. Not anything I have uh, much interest in casting. So, I mean, I could play a Fortify. I just don't have enough tiny little creatures for that to really be good. So, right, so that goes back to what do we want the last playable to be? Sphere of the Suns? Probably not. I don't have enough on the top end. The only way I would want Sphere of the Suns is if I was playing Cumulox, and I, I don't want to cut any of these cards for, for any of these cards for any of these cards. So, it's either going to be my second Stoic Rebuttal, this card, which I'm not sure if I can cast, Sickle Slicer, or Mana Leak. I don't hate Mana Leak in a deck like this. I, I could actually just play these two and play 16 lands. That's pretty reasonable, actually. Because, I, I mean, without as many colored sources necessary... Yeah, maybe I'm going to do that. I think I actually want to do that. Because this gives me a nice flyer to end the game, and I have a bunch of other ways to do so. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. So it wants me to play 7 white and 7 blue. So 7 white doesn't really give me too like enough sources to cast uh, Homunculus on turn 1. And this guy is kind of like a 5 drop, so I think I'm okay going down to 6 and 8. Because I do have this as my 7th blue source. And if I don't get to cast Cumulox on time, it's not as big of a deal. I'd rather cast Court Homunculus on time. But yeah, I mean, I'm not getting that guy out until round turn 5 anyway, so that's fine. And I mean, I could I could also, I don't know, I don't really want to play Stoker Bottle with 6 Islands. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this deck. Really happy I took that Dark Steel Axe when I did, because I definitely wasn't getting it back, and I didn't end up with any Cranial Plating. So the main weakness of this deck, um, not enough Cranial Platings. I like to play 3 to... It, I'm only happy with this deck if I have 3 Court Homunculus and 3 Glenhawk Idol. I only have 2 of each. So that's pretty disappointing. So there are definitely a lot of weaknesses to this deck. I got a lot of cards late, but that still wasn't really enough. And I think it ended up somewhere 6, 6 6.5 out of 10. But that doesn't mean that I can't win. The best thing about playing such an aggressive and um, linear deck is is if your opponents don't, um, don't have the right sideboard cards or don't play perfectly in a lot of the situations you can just run them over so i'm pretty happy with this deck even though um it didn't turn out great i think i drafted okay and uh yeah that's about it so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next bit hey guys back here for round one and uh yeah we're looking looking pretty solid i'm gonna beat some people down with court of and glintalk idols not quite enough consistency in the deck but 
you know, can't have everything. Lost the die roll, disappointing, but not insurmountable. I wonder if my opponent's going to... Oh, I just had to start talking. Of course, after I say that my deck isn't consistent and that I only have one Cordimongulus and one Glinthawk Idol, I draw a hand with Cordimongulus into Glinthawk Idol, which is really the only thing that you want to be doing. I have no planes, or no islands, but I don't care. I, I don't need this last card. This is all I need to be doing. <laughs> now, um, obviously Cordimongulus is not nearly as good on the play as it is on the... Rather, it is not nearly as good on the draw as it is on the play, because there's a good chance that my opponent's going to just play a two drop and be able to trade for it. So he mulliganed to six on the play, but um, not too big of a deal. There's a mountain. Scary. Could be Court Homunculus. I mean, could be Burst Lightning for my Court Homunculus. Um, drawing planes there is obviously terrible. I probably won't even need four planes in any game. I guess I'll, I'll want to cast a Rusted Relic at some point, but. Ooh, so my opponent does not have a play here. Could mean Nameless Inversion because he's in red-black. Um, I could do something tricky like play this right now to get around Gut Shot. I guess I have affinity cards, but it doesn't matter. I could just play this next turn, so may as well play the planes out. Um, doesn't really matter, I guess. Of course, I'm playing the Glintalk Idol pre-combat so that my Court Homunculus will get pumped. Also, holding on to the Darksteel Citadel is better because... Um, it'll activate Glintalk Idol, so if there's a turn where I want to play a non-artifact, um, then I can still activate this, and I want to use all my mana, and I can still activate this guy with a um, Darksteel Citadel. Alright, so he has got himself a nice little Plague Drusalka. That card usually doesn't belong in that deck. So I'm not exactly sure what's what's up, but um, we'll see. And again, he left up that, that two mana, but I feel like if he had a removal spell, he should have cast it last turn. Um, maybe he's, he was just waiting to use it on the Glintalk Idol, but um, I, I probably have more guaranteed damage by putting the axe on the Glintalk Idol because he could chump block, but if he chump blocks, I'm happy. And um, if he uses a removal spell on my Court Homunculus, then he's not using a removal spell on my Glintalk Idol, so I'm happy about that too. Um, also, the obvious Mana Sync impact. What? He has a removal spell, but he waited until my end step? Oh, he's basic line cycling. Okay. That is a lot less confusing. So, I'm not sure what kind of red black deck plays Fiery Fall and Plague Drusalka, but I'm not complaining. I mean, it's not like Fiery Fall is a bad card in the red-black deck, whereas I think Plague Drusalka is kind of an actively bad card. I mean, it doesn't really do much for you. I guess he can he can turn on Bloodthirst with it, which could be problematic, but, I mean, I, I'm... If I draw an island... Oh, well, I guess he's got a Gorehorn Minotaurs. So I can't even repeal that with an island. But um, I'm still in alright shape here. Not really a great draw. So this is sort of one of those turns where playing the Darksteel Citadel will actually benefit me because I'll have enough mana to move the, the Darksteel Citadel back to the Court Homunculus, and obviously I can't attack into the Gorehorn Minotaur, so um, yeah, let's do it this way. Of course, if I draw an island next turn, then I'll have enough mana to return the Gorehorn Minotaurs, and that should ban me enough time to uh, be able to close the game out. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, this is definitely troublesome, getting the Gorehorn Minotaurs out. I mean, it's a huge creature. <laughs> of course, if he doesn't have another creature to follow up with, then it'll be tough for him to race what I'm doing, but uh, he's, it still could be trouble. There is some argument last turn for not attacking with the Court Homunculus, but I think getting into extra two damage makes enough sense that it was worth doing. And there isn't really any white instance that I, that I would pretend to hold up against him anyway. I mean, maybe like an Apostle's Blessing or something like that, but 
unlikely for me to have those, and it's unlikely for him to play around it anyway, so it's a lot better for me to move the, the Dark Steel Axe to the Court Homunculus because it's going to fall off the Glintock Idol anyway. Alright. It's a pretty obvious attack. <laughs> Nothing to really comment on that. Of course, he can turn on Bloodthirst again, which would be very unfortunate for me. Not Vampire Alka. Okay. okay, another Gorehorn Minotaurus is definitely trouble. Drawing Island there is great, though. But I think I want to play Fairy Mechanist this turn. Let me think about this. So if I play Fairy Mechanist, um, then I can threaten to double block one of these and still get in for two I can't it, it's tempting to just um, move over the axe and attack with the glintock idol but I can't kill him in two turns because he has played Grusalka out so I think I'm actually gonna play this fairy mechanist and of course I do still get to hit for two hopefully I'll draw a court homunculus right here Edge Champion's not bad. So I'm definitely going to block one of these Gorehorns. Probably just double block them. Because again, I can't just kill him in the air next turn. Um, if he taps out here pre-combat, um, which would be extremely surprising, then I'll consider it. Like, if he plays land and a 6-drop, and I can survive it. <laughs> if it's a Hellkite Tyrant, then I'll have to chump. Okay. I think it's worth double blocking here. Because getting one of these off the board is actually just very, very good for me. And if he's got a removal spell, which he clearly hasn't for the last few turns, then, um, well, I mean, I guess the last two turns he was playing Gorhorn Minotaurs regardless. So yeah, I'm not sure. If he had like a cheap creature, he probably should have played it pre-combat, because then he could have threatened to sack both that and the Drusalka. But it looks like... I don't know, we'll see what happens. Another reason why I'm willing to make this play is because I'll still have three artifacts um, for the Etch Champion. I've got two indestructible artifacts, so um, the Etch Champion should get Metalcraft regardless. But it looks like the block worked. I'm down to nine here, but... Um, I should be okay. Should be able to stabilize with, with Etch Champion and then just kill him the next turn. Alright, let's try and cast this card, please. Alright, so now I have to kind of make a decision. It's probably not worth getting the Darksteel Axe, and I'd, I'd rather just keep up Repeal for two. Well, what am I repealing for two? I mean, I could repeal the Plague Rusalka. Nah, doesn't really do me much good. So I have a Protection from All Colors Etch Champion, and I'm at 9 life here. He could, like, just play Burst, I don't know, yeah, Burst Lightning at end step, and then attack me with both creatures and then Burst Lightning me again, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't have Burst Lightning. Okay. So it was a pretty close game. I thought I was going to be way ahead, but he had both those Gorehorn Minotaurs, which were definitely trouble.
Not too much out of the sideboard that I think I want to bring in here. Maybe this Stoic Rebuttal Sphere of the Sun's plan, or Kimalak Sphere of the Sun's plan, isn't quite as good as something like just a Mana Leak and a Sickle Slicer. Or maybe another Repeal. Repeal, I think, it's a little bit worse when my opponent's playing such efficient creatures. Because it's not like I'm going to be able to repeal um, his creature before it, it gets into attack me. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this sideboard. Mana Leak might be a little bit awkward because I might have to commit to the board. Um, but there also could be a situation where I just get an early Court Homunculus out and then start pressuring him and can leave up Mana Leak. But we'll see. And, I mean, if my draw is not perfect and... I, he gets a creature out, or a cheap creature out early, and I can counter the first bloodthirst creature that he plays. Then that's uh, that's pretty good for me. So my opponent looks like he he's playing stuff like Play Grusaka just to turn on bloodthirst and try and get that out early. It makes sense if you really don't have much in the way of um, vampire lacerators or goblin fire slingers. Although those were kind of going around pretty late, so. Not 100% sure. One thing that I know I don't do enough of is remembering and, and clicking on and highlighting where people were sitting in the draft. In real life, it's a lot easier because you can just see the people, but here you just see the avatars and you don't even see their names in the draft circle, so um, you, you kind of have to hover over their names and then write them down and remember it that way. But that's kind of some sort of edge that you can get because you can see um, where people are sitting around the table. So, this is an awkward hand. I'm going to keep it. I prob well, yeah, I'm going to keep it for sure. I've got a Frogmite and a Rusted Relic that I can play, plus a Darksteel Citadel to make the curve a little bit better. No, I do not want to restart my computer right now. And I'll draw planes right here, so it'll make it all better. No, but I did draw a Darksteel Axe, so that's actually pretty good. Because that means that I get a frog my next turn. Alright, so no turn one play, no turn two play again for my opponent. And I get a frog might and a quarter myculus this turn. So actually, playing the Dark Steel Citadel out last turn kind of was bad because it took away one of my options of casting Ether Case Knight and I can always play Dark Steel Citadel out the next turn. It turns out that this play would be well actually playing Dark Steel Citadel first turn enabled me to make this play, which is probably better, so I'm not really sure why my opponent killed the homunculus over the frog might. I don't think it's gonna matter though, so whatever. But yeah, him trading early removal for my early creature is fine. That's what happens. <laughs> but that was a pretty explosive start for, for my draft, or for this game. I'm pretty happy doing something like that. That's why I do like Frogmite in this deck a fair amount. Not an incredible amount, but, you know, it's not bad. So Gouger means that he's going to actually be able to... Um, turn on Bloodthirst next turn. I could do something like just equip here and then not attack, but I don't think that's what I'm going to be doing to be winning this game. It's not an unreasonable option, considering I know that he's got two um, Gorehorn Minotaurs in his deck, and um, I can just play Rusted Relic to outclass this next turn. The problem is, if I do that, and he has another Burst Lightning or a Nameless Inversion, then I pretty much lose the game. I could just chump here next, this turn, but that would be really bad too. I think this card is great, and it's one of the one of the biggest signals for me. When I see it, I almost always take it early on because I know that if this card's going around, then nobody's in that deck, and I'm going to end up with a great version of it. All right. 
That is not a bad turn from him. I am very happy to see that turn from him. And I got another Frogmite out there. So, good stuff. Because this Rust Relic is going to be my fourth artifact. So Frogmite is free. And obviously a 2-2 isn't an incredible force on this board, but it's not bad. And I mean, I can equip it with a Darksteel Axe. With Exalted plus Darksteel Axe, that's 5 damage. Still leave Rusted Relic back um, on defense, which is nice. And this is one of the reasons why I was okay playing 17 lands in this deck, even though I ended up with 16. Um, because Darksteel Axe is kind of a mana sink, so if I draw a spell next turn, then I'll be a little bit tied up. But yeah, I mean, I played this on turn two. Wow. So it looks like he had to kind of go hybrid elemental spirit, which is not where he wants to be. So... Here I have options. He hasn't played a spirit, so there's nothing in the graveyard, but he could do something like um, Nameless Inversion, Chump, get his Nameless Inversion back. Either way, I think it's just best for me to suit up the big guy and send him in. It is 8 damage right here. So, if he doesn't chump, I mean, he's only got two cards in hand. He does have two mana open, and, I mean, he's played a lot of removal spells this game. It's not unreasonable to think that he's got a Nameless Inversion. I feel like he would have used it a couple of turns ago, but um, it's not impossible. This is why I like something like Kite Sail in this deck. Obviously, he doesn't have unlimited chumps with the Thief of Hope, but he's got a couple. I mean, he could draw more. He could draw into a couple more creatures, but once I guess once I get him into this position, I'm I'm in good shape. So again, we really are still worried about nothing. <laughs> I'm not worried about anything anymore. So I want to equip this to the Frogmite because um, it's actually pretty obvious here. This guy can't block this. This guy can block that. So pretty clear. So even though I didn't have any plays, equipping the Darksteel Axe really forced a chump from him because it threatened to deal two more damage, which would threaten to kill him in one turn. And then it also gives me a good blocker, so he can't really attack here. I mean, he can, but it's just not efficient for him. All right. So he has Grim Affliction here, which is fine. Means he's going to be able to hit in. I'm not exactly sure why he left red red up. That's a little worrisome to me. He's obviously attacking here because there's no reason not to. And we'll see what we draw. But it's actually a pretty interesting play um, on my next turn because I have to decide between... Well, now it's easy. I have to decide between killing him in two turns or... Um, trying to chump lock so he doesn't play a big bloodthirsty creature but it's actually not really much of a decision um, in retrospect because I definitely just want to be able to kill him in two turns if he doesn't draw a creature next turn he's dead and I can easily just chump with the sickle slicer on the, gourd, the gouger which I probably will And just because I'm playing Thought Cast um, and I have all this equipment out, I'm going to play out this land. In case I draw Thought Cast and I can play it for one mana, then I can play a spell that I draw, another land, and then still make some equips. So it's pretty important for me to jump here. Well, it's not that important. So I was thinking it would be important because otherwise his, my Rusted Relic would trade for a um a bloodthirsty gorehorn minotaurs but if he plays a bloodthirsty gorehorn minotaurs and he just has to chump with it next turn anyway and then i can move the dark seal axe onto the germ and trade i 
I don't like going to a lower life when I don't necessarily need to. And next turn I can just move the Sickle Slicer over to the Aether Case Knight and just block with that. So, yeah, I'm going to chump here. Just staying at a higher life when I have a, a far superior board seems like a better play for me. And it's not like I'm losing an artifact this way. I still have plenty of artifacts, so my Mirror Enforcer is going to be as cheap as possible because I have Sickle Slicer, so it's the Black Germ doesn't take away from my artifact count. So this turns off his Bloodthirst, and I guess it takes away a turn if he's got like a a Vampire Outcast or something. Scuttling Death. All right. Let's see, so I've got one, two, three, four, five artifacts on the table, so it's going to cost two. And I'll still have four mana to move over the Sickle Slicer here. Sounds good to me. Of course, my opponent's down to one card in hand, but he's going to be able to get Thief of Hope back. Could have also just equipped first and attacked, and then just traded the Mirror Enforcer, taking him down to th to four. That would have been an interesting play. It doesn't really lose to much because the only thing that he could have would have been um, gut shot. So maybe that would have been the right play. As it stands, um, I think I just want to equip the Sickle Slicer here because this gives me two creatures that can block his gouger so even if he draws like smash to smithereens then I don't have to chump with this plus it gives me um, I mean I already had it but two lethal threats next turn so he has to actually draw two creatures so we won the match pretty easy victory to be honest um, my opponent's deck didn't seem ideal it sort of seemed like he was stuck in the middle between spirits and um, bloodthirst, but either way, it was a couple of close match matches, um, or a couple of close games, really. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next round. Hey guys, here with round number two, and we get to be on the play this time, which is exciting. Uh, this hand's okay. I'll keep it. I think Edge Champion isn't really fair, so being able to play that on time should be great. It's actually, yeah, oh, that's a sick draw. I think it's not that good. It's a good draw, though. Actually, yeah, it is a really good draw, because now next turn I can play Edge Champion. And it'll be ready to go. In terms of having protection from all colors and just being a general amazing card. So my opponent led off on Island Swamp Culling Deus and <laughs> Graft Mage. So really not sure what to think. Two, three. So this guy's gonna cost four. Don't quite have four. Could play Glen Hawk Idol and Frogmite. Yeah, that's what I'll do. please and yeah this game's going really well for me my opponent doesn't seem to be doing anything all that powerful and I am doing things that are very powerful I don't know why I have a, a dark steel citadel up that's a pretty big mistake I need to focus more um, I don't know why I did. I thought I was going to have to pay one mana for the Frogmite, but it wasn't paying enough attention. But the reason why it's a big mistake is because now I can't use um, Glintock. I wonder if he has Cryptic Command. Interesting. Let's not play a spell this turn. And let's only... Okay, so this is going to cost me two. Okay, so I'm only going to animate one of these. And 
and then I'm going to attack. Alright, maybe he doesn't have cryptic command. <laughs> Uh, sure. Okay, Grim Affliction there. And then he wants to make that guy bigger, so we can dispatch this guy. It's kind of bad value, actually, because he's got Culling Deus out, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. Because I'm not going to be able to play Mirror Enforcer post combat because one of my artifacts is dying. I think it was still um, the correct play on my part to not play Mirror Enforcer pre combat because I know that there's a Cryptic Command in the draft and my opponent just passed on 4 mana with the exact mana that he would need for Cryptic. I suspected that he had a combat trick anyway, so I could have just not attacked with Frogmite and that would have um, taken me out of the situation, but um, I was assuming it would be like a steady progress. Oh, he's going to. Oh, he's going to... Oh, that's pretty good, actually. So I kind of did that really poorly. I should have... Okay, that was a, that was actually also a pretty big mistake. I should have waited for that to resolve. Then this guy gets proliferated. Then I kill it. Then he gets the Cloning Days. But now he gets a free card off it. So um, that was a pretty bad play on my part. I'm still really ahead because my draw is way better, but I <laughs> so far do not deserve it. Alright, Core Homunculus is free here. And I'm still just throwing the guys right in. Very important to play the Mirror Enforcer pre-combat because um, he's going to trade with something here. So he's up to five mana, or six mana, five cards in hand. Two counters on that Culling Deus, which I'm not really sure how good it's going to be in his deck, but I need to play a lot more solid if I want to win this match. One of the best parts about playing Affinity is every once in a while I do the All's Dust check, where my opponent's about to get to seven mana, and it's a colorless sweeper, so it could be in any card and then I realize, oh, most of my creatures are colorless. So it does not matter if he has all his dust because he can't actually kill any of my creatures. So we've got a lot of bad draws in our deck just because we have, like, what, one, two, three, four, five blue cards. Or, I guess, four blue cards because one of them's in our hand. But any land is good because we get to play our Rusted Relic. And... Any of the other spells are pretty good, because we can cast pretty much anything except for the other Rusted Relic. Kite Sail is, is not great. <laughs> Alright, so I mean this puts this is lethal. He's got a chump block here. I mean he's gonna be able to culling days, but that's alright. More Grim Afflictioning. Sure. He's going to draw a lot of cards next turn. So he actually is in the blue-black proliferate deck. I've never actually seen anyone play this, but it's pretty interesting. It's important for me to play this guy out, because in case one of my other two... Uh, or, I guess, both of my other two artifacts. Well, okay, he's got to kill both my artifacts plus the Etch Champion. So he drew a billion cards, but it's going to be hard for him to beat Etch Champion getting in there a couple of times. He's got to play a Flying Blocker this turn. And even then, he has to kill me somehow. He, it's not like he's close to casting, like, Emrakul or something like that. And I don't think that... There's colorless removal that'll take out Edge Champion. Or like a mass... I don't even think that there's a mass removal spell in the format that kills Edge Champion. If it's metal crafted. 
It's kind of like Algae Gariel. This guy does not die. I've actually, I've really never seen anyone play the deck that my opponent's playing. All his cards actually work really well with it. I mean, he's got two Grim Afflictions. Culling Days is great. Thrumming Bird is, is an amazing proliferate card. Mold Drifter is just good. And then this Graph Mage gets counters from the, the uh, proliferating. So I haven't seen anyone pull this off to any, any great effect, but this is, this is definitely interesting. All right, so there's a Demir Guild Mage. Um, not really sure where that's going to go, but again, he could have Cryptic Command. Would not be surprised. All right. Drawing land is good. I don't think I'm going to equip pre-combat because I'm pretty sure that he's going to Cryptic Command here or die. Or not. I guess he could just have any removal spell for this. And then equipping, not equipping is pretty bad. Alright, so he's got a cheap removal spell, like another Grim Affliction. Oh, a Nameless Inversion, sure. Alright, so if I had, I don't know, if I had equipped Kite Cell, I was going to equip it here anyway, so it's not like that was really much of a thing. But yeah, I'll play out this Rusted Relic. I don't see much of a reason not to. You get to see that he's got a Stoic Rebuttal in his deck. So he's very controlling, he's got a bunch of removal, he's got some nice synergies going on, and he picked up some strong cards into Mirror Guild Mages. He didn't want to pay two life there, that's a little weird. And there's another proliferate card, so he's really got a lot of synergies going on, and I think that I, before, during the draft, I actually mentioned how bad I thought that deck was, so that's pretty hilarious that, that my opponent's playing it. Okay, so what do we want to do with our sideboard? Not much, huh? Maybe bring in the Sickle Slicer just as another cheap creature. Because cheap creatures seemed pretty good against him. They got the repeal. Yeah, repeal is probably fine. Kites, I mean, Dispatch actually was the worst card for me that game. But, I mean, he drew a billion more cards than me. It didn't really matter. I had Edge Champion. So, hopefully, I'll draw Edge Champion again. But I don't think that I want to make any specific sideboards. There's not really much that I can do to break up what he's doing. He's being really reactive, and I don't have um, much in the way of stopping him from doing that. But I'm kind of excited to play this game. My opponent's definitely on an interesting deck. He's definitely a very competent player. He made some nice plays and sequenced things well and didn't didn't he remembered pretty much everything he needed to remember and so yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um this is a keep. It's not a great hand. Now it's a great hand. Now it's just an amazing hand actually. It's really I think it's really important for me to play the Glintock Idol next turn. Being this turn. Because this will give me access to flying damage a lot earlier. And you really want to play this at the beginning of your curve rather than at the end of your curve. Because then you can start getting in every single turn. Alright, so there's the Culling Deus again, which is a good start for him. I guess with the proliferate trigger on the stack, he can sacrifice that, which is kind of sweet. I don't think he's going to do it, but that would be awesome. All right. Going to play this guy pre-combat, but just to trigger the Glintock Idol. And I am going to play the Frogmite here in case he has Vapor Snag for one of my creatures. I don't think that his deck is playing Vapor Snag, but he would do it in combat, um, so that would be really bad. Because then I wouldn't be able to play the Frogmite this turn, and it's not like he's going to play around anything by me playing Fro Frogmite first, so it's kind of a free th 
hoping to do that first. And I've got four guys out, so if I drop Cumulox next turn, he's coming down. Big old flyer. Alright, that, that guy should should be a bit annoying, but at the same time I can still attack with um, with Frogmite next turn. Or Court Homunculus. Because I have the exalted trigger. He's obviously not gonna block. I'm attacking with Court Homunculus because I feel like Frogmite would be cheaper to um, Frogmite would be cheaper to recast if I needed to. It's not really gonna matter because it only costs one anyway. So if this guy trades here, and then later on this guy gets bounced, then I'll be able to play this guy for cheaper than I will this guy, or probably a comparable now. So it doesn't really it doesn't really affect much, but it's just a tiny little thing. So opponent's finally got a mole drifter out there, which means that he's gonna be able to draw out of that mana screw pretty quickly. He's obviously stuck on, on only islands. Or maybe he only had blue spells in hand and he's he was just holding a swamp up there for for some reason. Alright. Um, so now I kind of have to decide if I just want to try and suicide my guys in. If I just he he didn't attack with Thrumming Bird, which means that he has uh, the idea in mind that he's going to chump block the Rusted Relic this turn. I think I still well maybe I just want to attack with like a Frogmite. No, that doesn't do me any better. Yeah, we're just. We're just sending in with Rusted Relic, and if he chumps here, then he chumps, and he loses his Storming Bird. Which, I mean, it's not the end of the world, he gets to draw a card off it, but... Okay, so he loses a Mole Drifter, so I don't know why he didn't attack last turn. That's very suspicious. I don't, I didn't have mana for Glintock Idol to activate it. So I don't know why he didn't attack with it, but now I have mana to activate Glintock Idol, and that's another reason why holding back there is pretty good, just because um, I can I can actually just block the Thrumming Bird if it tries to come in and proliferate anything. And it's something that, that you don't always see, Narcolepsy. All right. So it's something that your opponent doesn't always see, because Glintock Idol is usually an attacker, not a blocker, but my opponent seems to be of enough caliber that he's not going to fall for that. Alright. So, still no real good alpha strike, so I'm going to be pretty happy just sending in for three. Unfortunate that I've been drawing a couple of lands, but yeah, so if I, I mean, if I alpha strike, then he blocks the Glintock Idol. And I get in for two, four, six, seven. Maybe it would have been worth it. Chump box one. I don't know. But then he gets to attack back with the thrumming birds. Wow, okay, he's still taking the damage which is definitely opening up um, the chance that I can just swing back next turn. Okay, that didn't make any sense. He could have just chump locked and done that anyway. That's really weird. I guess he made his decision later on in the turn. You know, he's got his black mana now, which is really bad for me because that means that I can go to attacks and then he can play Grim Affliction Well, let's see what he's got. There's a scavenger drake. And that's exactly what I was looking to draw. He doesn't have metal craft or anything, so we can just get rid of this guy. Doesn't eat it exile, so it doesn't even trigger this. Stoke rebuttal. Oh, brutal. Okay. Well, so now let's let's see. So if we fire up this, then he can block 
and eat a creature chump with that and then he takes five so he's got a chump with the scavenger drake here um i lose my glint hawk idol in the process but he loses both throwing bird and scavenger drake and he goes down to two either way um this is still a good attack for me Yeah, he gets to eat the Glintock Idol, and then even if he chumps with this, then he's still taking five, so he's forced to chump with that too. So um, he might he might actually just eat the Ether Case Knight. All those creatures are flying anyway, so Glintock Idol isn't that much different, and this stops me from being able to actually attack him. If he still had Culling Deus out, then this would be a much harder play. Alright, so he is going to eat the Glintock Idol, which is pretty interesting. He's chumping the Ether Case Knight? Doesn't make any sense. Does he have a Mutagenic Growth? No, Mutagenic Growth still kills him. I, he, that seemed like a purely suboptimal play to chump lock the Knight. Because he just loses a damage that way. I am thoroughly confused. Um, he's not going to play around anything anyway, since he's at one life. And I'd rather have the land out in case I draw, um, in case I draw a thought cast and I want to cast an expensive thing. I don't know. Cast a sickle slicer and equip it and play thought cast on another land. Actually, I already have enough. One, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah. Oh no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have enough either way. No, I would have enough. So I have seven land. I have eight lands out. So that means that I could play Thoughtcast and Sickle Slicer and equip it. And I think that's the most mana that I can use in one turn. <laughs> All right. So there's one creature. Um. So right now he's got to have two extra things. Um, I'm gonna go for it here. He could have two removal spells, but one of them's gotta be Vapor Snap. I guess one of them could be Repeal. Well, okay. Now what? Now you die because you chump blocked the wrong thing last turn. If he didn't do that, then I wouldn't have been able to attack, and he might have had a chance to win this game. Okay, it looks like he realized that he made a mistake. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, managed to win this game. Um, it just goes to show you how much how much one um, one play could have mattered. And it, look, it's it's a small thing. And it happens all the time that people miss those. I'm sure I've made mistakes of that caliber in this recording session. So anyway, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the finals. Hey, guys, immediately back for the finals, which is good because I need to go to sleep soon. But that was a pretty interesting game. I was I was excited to, uh, to play that kind of game. Sand's pretty good. It's not, like, incredible or anything. Yeah. It's fine. Let's see what we draw here. There are a lot of good draws, though. Okay, so I drew Ether Case Knight, which means that I definitely want to lead on Island. There could be a situation where I draw my other Darksteel Citadel, um, but that's only one card, and if I draw Planes, then it's much better to do it this way. He's got a Tukatung Thalad, so I drew an Island. It's not a terrible draw because it means that on turn three I'll be able to play my Blinding Soul Eater. So we, we're playing against the green white deck. Pretty clearly, he's green and white, and he's got two Katunk Thalads, so he's going to be playing a lot of like Sign of the Wild this turn. Oh, nothing this turn. It's good for me. So, not a really explosive draw on my part. Not too excited about it. It had a lot of potential, but first couple of draws didn't really match up and align with what I wanted to do. If I had played, sure. If I had played a um, 
a planes on turn two and this guy, then that would have actually been pretty good for me. But I mean, at least I get to play frog mites this turn. <laughs> frog mites plural. And just a bunch of two twos against his deck full of one ones isn't too horrible. Rusted relics, a little bit to be desired there. Wow, red mana. Bloodshot trainee. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, I want to draw a plane so I can arrest that or dispatch it or something. Probably arrest. Wax main Baku. What's going on here? Alright. So this thing can only deal four damage, so it's probably safe to just play a rusted relic here. By doing that, I can get in with my Glinthawk Idol and have a 5 5 attacker for next turn. but Planes was definitely my best draw there. I like having two removal spells against the board with, with these kind of creatures on it. I'm not really sure what my opponent's doing. He Evolving Wilds for a Planes on turn two when he's got Mountains in his deck, which is a little confusing, but he might have had the Mountain the whole time and just waited to cast the Bloodshot Trainee. O-Ring. Yep, where's this going? Rusted Relic. Okay. Opponent's down to one card in hand, and I've got four. So that's really good for me. Huh. I just doubt that my opponent would do this. Yeah, there's no way I'm blocking here. There's The reason why I'm not blocking is because I can just leave up Dispatch and do that at a later date. It's too good for me to be able to just trade one Frogmite for that, so I think that my opponent's probably got some sort of pump spell. And I can play around a pump spell pretty well next turn. Because we're going to essentially have the exact same scenario, except this time I'll have Dispatch up. And as I was mentioning, I want to Dispatch that creature anyway. So I'm very happy to play it this way. And then if my opponent tries to play like a Goblin War Paint or Fortify or something weird like that, then I can always just dispatch it in response. And he's only got two cards in hand, so not very worried at this point. I guess he can't really attack this turn because Rusted Relic's in play, so he's got to have another removal spell for Rusted Relic. Another planes is a great draw here. Well, I'm not actually gonna attack with that um, with one thing, but I am gonna I'm gonna animate my Glintalk Idol. It honestly might just be better to not attack with Rust Relic here. I get in for an extra point of damage in the air. And um, he's just going to chump block with that anyway. It is worth getting through the Tukatung Thalid mess, but um, the main reason why I'm making this play is because it sets him up for a blowout if I get to double block with Frogmites. Or I guess Frogmite in an Aether Case Knight at this point. But he has very little motivation to attack here. Last time he attacked, I was tapped out. This time, I have mana up. Okay. So I'm going to let him um, spend his mana to equip to the Bloodshot Trainee, and then I'm going to take it out. No point. I mean, I know that my opponent's going to make that play, so I may as well wait until he does that. He could still play, like, a Fortify and then kill something with it, but that's basically just using a Fortify to kill either case knight which is okay with me and with that guy out of the way that kind of means all right sure you got tribal flames so yeah i mean he couldn't equip the the copper carapace this turn because um i waited on that so i could repeal my blinding soul eater to get an extra card it's probably worth it. 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've only got six mana. So I can't really do it this turn. I can't really play it out this turn, so I'm just gonna go to the skies. I mean, when I say that, I mean I'm just gonna attack with everything. I could also just play Repeal on the Sapperling token, but it's not worth it. So yeah, my opponent's way, way behind here. Drew way too many lands, even with a couple of removal spells, I'm still pretty far ahead. Just for mana, I mean, there's n it's not really too mana efficient or anything, but it's it's kind of worth doing. Let's see, seven nine. Oh, let's let's do this. This puts lethal on the table. He's got to play a removal spell. If he does, I don't know. I'm still okay. I still have five power for next turn. No reason to show him the Edge Champion, even though there's really nothing that you can do about Edge Champion. Okay. So, I think Repeal is pretty good in this matchup. Cumulox is probably also really good though. But I don't mind making some more space in the deck. I'm on the draw, so I think I'm going to still be okay with, with 16 lands even without the sphere. And, well, yeah, Mana Lake just. Maybe not Mana Lake. Maybe that's not really where I want to be in this matchup. I'm not really sure. Maybe I should bring in Shrivel? I can kind of assume that he's got some sort of scatter. And it's not too hard to play this. I don't think I really need it, though. But yeah, I think Repeal is pretty good against him. I'm happy with this kind of sideboard plan. Alright, this hand really could use a one drop. But can't have everything. That's a bad draw. Okay, um I'm trying to decide which land to play here. I know it seems like a very minor decision, but you never know when these things come up. I think that it's a, it's about the same. I'm gonna go with it's about the same. <laughs> There's not, I can't really think of any way where it would be better to play either of them, so I'm just gonna be happy enough doing that. So, next turn if I don't draw land, then I can play Frogmite. If I do draw land, I can go Blinding Soul Eater or Kite Sail into Frogmite. Um, so I, I have I have good options regardless. Rather, I have options regardless. Playing a two-two on turn three is not a good option, even if it enables my two-two flyer to attack. But at least it's something to do with my mana. Opponent here is stumbling around, not doing much. There's a bloodshot trainee, and got my land right on time. Fortunately, I'm going to have some 5-5s, five which are bigger than what the Bloodshot Trainee can actually deal with. But if he plays a Copper Carapace next turn, then I'm not going to be happy. I do have four... Alright, you got yourself a Tribal Flames. I do have four... Oh, now I only have three artifacts, but um, either way I could play a pretty cheap Thought Cast. Okay, pretty happy to trade Frogmite for Aquastrand Spider. Aquastrand Spider can um, hit my Glintalk Idol, not this turn, but he can do it a different turn. So, um, yeah, 
I'm happy to make that trade. And if he wants to just take two damage here, then that's fine with me too. He might want to start whittling away my artifacts and trading off there so that my Rusted Relic won't become a creature, but I have so many artifacts in my deck anyway that I don't really care about that. Next turn, if none of my artifacts die, then I'm going to play Thoughtcast pre-combat, and hopefully I'll draw land within that to go either Rust Relic or Fairy Mechanist or some spell cheaper. I can't really imagine that I don't get that. So he's got the Oblivion Ring for the first Rusted Relic, and... Um, he's probably just going to attack with the trainee because I seem to be a more aggressively um, slanted deck. Not even attacking with the trainee. He didn't like getting hit last turn, so that makes sense. He also could have like a pump spell or something. Um, so a couple options. I could play Court Homunculus, then Thought Cast, and still have two mana up to play Kite Sail. That seems good. Or I could just play Rusted Relic. Seems fine too. I don't think I want to attack into Aquastrand Spider. It doesn't do me any good. I'd rather keep my artifact count up. Playing a Court Homunculus on this board doesn't really do that much. Alright. Let's play this thing. I'll get I'll get myself a free thought cast at some point. I'm definitely not making the Glintalk Idol a creature, because if he does have a pump spell, um, like a mutagenic growth or something like that, then I don't want him to be able to use it um, to kill my Glintalk Idol this turn. So if I don't make it a creature, then he doesn't have that option, even if he would have wasn't gonna do it. So he's gotta scatter the seeds. So that's why he didn't attack with the trainee wasn't necessarily um, that he didn't want to be an aggressively slanted deck, it's just that he wanted to cast Scatter the Seeds and have an efficient turn mana-wise. I'm pretty happy that I didn't do the other play. Well, I guess um, Court Homunculus is a lot better on this board now. Wow, that's a problem. I don't... okay. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Alright, so I'm going to Thought Cast to start things off. See what we can pick up. Etch Champion. Not a bad pickup. Because that can hold off the Garial indefinitely. And... Yeah, that's that's a great draw. Um, no, I don't think I want to attack. Well, yeah, actually I do want to attack. Because that means that with, with the Rusted Relic, I just have a two-turn clock, and he doesn't even have the opportunity to chump. He's definitely going to, oh, he's just going to take the damage. So it was definitely right for me to attack there, because that's two free damage that I would not have gotten. Not really sure why he didn't trade here. Makes this guy bigger. Seems like all upside to me. Gets another artifact off my board in the in the, the deep long shot that he's able to kill all three of my other artifacts. Okay. So first thing I think I want to cast this. I accidentally triggered that the right way. It's important for me to see my cards from Fairy Mechanist before I decide if I want to make that a creature. Darksteel Axe is an incredible draw. Alright. So if I attack with this and he trades here, and that means that I can kill him next turn. I 
Okay, he's still not trading. Um, that, yeah, that does matter, because I can only deal five to him with the etch champion. I don't even think I, I left myself... I mean, I guess I left myself dead to scatter top deck. Um, fortify. Maybe. Yeah. Scatter top deck. Fortify would have killed me. Actually, no, it wouldn't have. Okay. Do I have enough mana? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... One, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't have quite enough mana. Four, five, six. Um, maybe I, maybe I can kill him here. So if I play kite sail, okay, <laughs> won the match. All right, we did it. We got there. Did not lose a game. Um, I I think my deck was okay. It's probably a little bit better than I gave it credit for, but not really too much. I mean, I think that the, my opponent's decks were none of them were standard. I don't know if any of them were bad, but um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this this Modern Masters draft. Uh, <laughs> wondered where all the artifacts went. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys all enjoyed the Modern Masters draft, and this will probably be my last one, but it's been fun. I, I mean, I like the format. I think it's really difficult to draft and actually figure out where you should be, and a lot of the times you get kind of messed up and you don't really end up in the right spot, but I definitely did today. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day. Bye.